The Lord be with you. And also with you. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, bless the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your glory. Christ, our Passover Lamb, has been sacrificed for us. Let us therefore rejoice by putting away all malice and evil and confessing our sins with a sincere and true heart. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love and mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. May the God of love and power forgive you and free you from your sins, heal and strengthen you by his Spirit, and raise you to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen.
have given your only Son to die for our sins and to rise again for our justification. Grant us so to put away the leaven of malice and wickedness that we may always serve you in pureness of living and truth. Through the merits of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The whole group of those who believed were of one heart and soul, and no one claimed private ownership of any possessions, but everything they owned was held in common. With great power, the apostles gave their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them, for as many as owned lands or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of what was sold. They laid it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to each as any had need. This is the word of the Lord. Alleluia, Alleluia, I am the first and the last, says the Lord, and the living one. I was dead, Alleluia. and behold, I am alive forevermore. Alleluia. Alleluia. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. It was evening on the first day of the week. And the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, we have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails, and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord, and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples which are not written in this book, but these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing, 
you may have life in his name. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you. of the Apostles, which we hear in our readings in these early days of the Easter season, are astonishing. Today, it's a bond of heart and soul among the whole group of those who believed. And we're left in no doubt that the size of that group of believers was much larger than the eleven who'd been gathered behind that locked door on the day of resurrection. Chutzpah is the Yiddish word that captures the atmosphere, defined in my dictionary to be shameless audacity. If Luke's timeline is reliable, then by this point the day of Pentecost had passed Many had been fired with God's Holy Spirit and they had heard Peter's public testimony about what had been done to Jesus and how he had been raised from the dead by the power of God. All this is indeed the testimony of the faith which has been shared by believers ever since. Winding back some 50 days, though, we find the disciples behind locked doors for fear of the Jews. The Gospel isn't explicit, but they must have been feeling distraught at the turn of events. And we're not told anything about how they reacted to the resurrection news that had been brought to them by Mary Magdalene, a truly powerful message that was read in last Sunday's Gospel. But then they saw for themselves Jesus standing among them and saying simply, Peace be with you. He picked up the very words that he had used in his last discourses to them before his arrest. He gave them his peace and reminded them that as his father had sent him, so he was now sending them out, empowered by his gift of the Holy Spirit. But it is, of course, the famous Doubting Thomas, whose name is most closely associated with today's Gospel reading. He protested that he must have access to the physical realities of the crucified Jesus if he was ever going to believe what his friends had told him. But when again, this time in his presence, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Thomas didn't actually need to put his finger in the mark of the nails. He just said to Jesus, My Lord and my God. And it is that acclamation that is the heart of the matter. Jesus went on to say, Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. And that's the challenge of faith for us. Do you believe in the resurrection of Jesus Christ? We know it's the heart of our faith, but do we really believe? Each of us will have followed our own journeys that have brought us here 
to worship this morning. And before I touch on aspects of my own journey, I want to affirm emphatically that I am sure there are as many different routes to faith as there are believers. Our relationship with God through Christ is our own and unique. For me, almost 60 years have passed since two ordained Christians helped me on my way. The first is John Robinson, then Bishop of Woolwich, who published a short paperback, Honest to God, in 1963. And I've noticed that my copy is shown to be from the fourth printing of that book in the very year of its publication. <laughs> it excited debate and controversy because its purpose was to bring God down here and not have God stuck in the heavens out there. That's a crude way of putting it, but the book enabled me to relate to a human Jesus in whom love was the redeeming feature. Robinson says, to believe in God as love means to believe that in pure personal relationship we encounter the deepest truth about the structure of reality. And he says this requires a tremendous act of faith. But what is important for him is that we're not called upon to believe in a God out there in the heavens. He goes on to assure us that belief in God is the trust that love is the ground of our being. And I felt this human Jesus was accessible because as an inquiring university student at the time, I felt I could relate to his message about the primacy of love. My second mentor was a New Testament scholar called Charlie Moe. And in my last student year, I was lucky to find myself occupying rooms on the very staircase where this diminutive bachelor figure lived. He was charming and hospitable. And he stopped me journeying into humanism by sharing so convincingly that the resurrection of Jesus was well attested by the evidence of the New Testament. He puts it like this. Jesus the man of Nazareth, 2,000 years ago, though truly human, was also God, so far as a human being can be God. That is the astonishing conclusion to which the earliest evidence points. Though no genuinely human being can possibly be the whole of God, the whole of Jesus was God. He was God so far as God could be incarnate, that is, within human flesh and blood of that period. My preoccupation with the human face of God has continued through the intervening decades, and I've always wanted to distinguish between Jesus' total humanity while he was with us here on earth and the disclosure of his divinity at the resurrection. This has left me with the conundrum of somehow explaining all the ways and all the sayings of Jesus through his earthly ministry 
in which he revealed his own unique relationship with his father and the treatment of him that his father had ordained to be betrayed, tortured, and crucified. So my journey of faith goes on, and it's one that by definition cannot end in this life. But it is one that has brought me alongside the Apostle Thomas. I have for years resisted aspects of belief, but now I want to say to Jesus, my Lord and my God. to the Queen and the Royal Family in their loss and sorrow. Be their refuge and strength, O Lord. Reassure them of your continuing love and lift them from the depths of grief into the peace and light of your presence. In the name of Jesus, our Lord. Amen. 
We have come here to worship and praise God, who created this wonderful world with its vibrant life. May we recognise him, breaking into our doubts or closed minds, and always live in expectation of the opportunities God has for us when we emerge from the crisis caused by this virus. We pray that the good we have learnt may be carried into the future, our dependence on one another through the channels of love and gift and communication. Imagining how our society might become more just and secure. And Lord, strengthen your church and all who serve, that those who are searching may find an opening and a welcome. Lord, in your mercy. We pray that you would stretch out your hands to so many troubled places in our world, and particularly over the people of Myanmar, to bring reconciliation and healing to that torn country. As we pray too for the floods of refugees fleeing their unsafe homes, remembering that for all that they have lost, their essential person is wholly embraced by Christ. Lord, in your mercy. We lift up those who have lived for years with isolation and frustration, those whose jobs have been lost, those enduring depression and other mental challenges, those in frontline care work who have given their lives in the fight to control the virus that they all come to know a better future. Lord, in your mercy. Our prayers this month are focused on the Castle North Community Centre, and we pray for all those who give service there, and for those who benefit from it. Surround the sick and bereaved in your healing presence. Some we know who are simply not well, some who are fearful and in pain, some who are on their last journey. We name them in our hearts and allow those on our prayer list, Georgie Wormsley, Anne Smith. May Christ be for them the touch of wholeness and healing. And we pray for those who have died. Elizabeth Stenson, Janet Schrager, Kenneth McAllister, Kay King Farlow, and Doris Sullivan. And rejoice that they are with Christ. And we pray for those who mourn that they will be comforted. And we also remember those whose anniversaries of death fall at this time, Jill Chandler. Stephen Dodgson and Gerda Griffin. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. May the power of your resurrection live in us, kindling a new force of longing for generous, fair, and joyful living together. Merciful Father, I accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour. stood among his disciples and said, Peace be with you. Then were they glad when they saw the Lord. Alleluia. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us offer one another a sign of peace.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. In your loving care you spread before us the table of life, and give us the cup of salvation to drink. Keep us always in the fold of our Saviour and Shepherd, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And we say to you, Lord, forever. And we say together, Your Lord, Lord is the greatness, the power, the glory, the splendour, and the majesty. For everything in heaven and on earth is yours. All things come from you, and all the rest. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Almighty and Eternal Father. And in these days of Easter, to celebrate with joyful hearts the memory of your wonderful works. For by the mystery of his passion, Jesus Christ, your risen Son, has conquered the powers of death and hell and restored to men and women the image of your glory. He has placed them once more in paradise and opened to them the gates of life eternal. And so in the joy of this Passover, earth and heaven resound with gladness, while angels and archangels of the powers of all creation Sing forever the hymn of your glory. So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross. Bringing before you the bread of life and the cup of salvation, we proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Jesus Christ is Lord. Lord, Lord by, by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. You are the Saviour of the world. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes, and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people, gather us in your loving arms, and bring us with St Mary and all the saints to feast at your table in heaven. Through Jesus Christ, and with Christ, and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. 
as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one <coughs>
Lord God our Father, through our Saviour Jesus Christ, you have assured your children of eternal life, and in baptism have made us one with him. Deliver us from the death of sin, and raise us to new life in your love, in the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, by the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. <coughs> together. Almighty God, we thank you for leading us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work in your grace. have some uh, notices now before the final verse. Uh, just a couple of notices in this Saturday Foundation. Um, we uh, have set up online uh, on our church website under the, uh, in the um, online church section an online book of remembrance. We've been asked not to have physical books of remembrance, so if you want to sign that one online, please do so. There's also a link, I think, to the Church of England uh, book of remembrance, um, and obviously you can sign any ones you want. The second thing to say is that uh, the, the Prince Philip's funeral uh, is, it will be on uh, Saturday at 3 p.m. And we are having a, a service of Evensong here the day before, the evening before, at 6 o'clock on Friday. There will be a service of Evensong here the day before the funeral. And let me know this. Thank you very much. The God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the eternal covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that is well-pleasing in his sight, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. <laughs> with the power that raised Jesus from the dead at work within you, go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia, Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia. Alleluia.